Welcome back. Finally this hour, the fifth ever all-female spacewalk is due to begin at the International Space Station. A spacewalk is when astronauts get outside of their vehicles well in space, tied only together by a tether. Well, two NASA astronauts, Anne McLean and Nicole Ayers, will be setting out to relocate a space station communications antenna. They'll also install a mounting bracket for a set of new solar panels that will increase the station's total available power. Former NASA astronaut and commander of the International Space Station, Terry Virts, joins us now. Terry, good to have you with us this morning. So this spacewalk is going to be about six and a half hours long. Give us some more details about what it is they're going to be doing. Yeah, thanks for having me on. It's an exciting day. Uh, there's two big tasks. There's an antenna that's getting blocked. If you go outside the space station, there's lots of stuff out there. So they need to move an antenna to uh, so that it's not blocked so that it can actually work. And the big one is they're going to install a bracket for a future solar array. Um, the space station generates its electricity from solar. And uh, those solar panels were first launched, some of them 25 years ago, you know, some of them 20 years ago. So they're, they're not quite as good. So they're going to install a big bracket and then uh, in a few months, they'll bring up the actual solar arrays, they'll attach it to the bracket, and then they roll out um, to cover up the existing solar panels. I mean, and if all that didn't sound like enough, obviously, as Joe mentioned, they're just like tethered on with something that looks to be, I mean, obviously, I know it's very strong, but it's just this tiny little rope. The space suits they're wearing, they weigh nearly 400 pounds down here on Earth. I mean, how do you prep for this? What are the hours leading up to this like and the training like? You go to the gym a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Like you said, this suit this suit is bulky. Uh, we used to joke it's not designed for humans. It's a torture chamber. Uh, it, it's great. It's an amazing. It's like a mini spaceship. It keeps you safe from the vacuum of space. It keeps air inside the suit. It has its own radio. It has its own little jetpacks you can fly around in. That You call it a rope. It's actually a really super thin metal cable that attaches you to the space station, and it reels out like a fishing line. So you need a lot of upper body strength. Um, the you know you move around in the suit with your arms and your hands. You're always you grab on to move yourself around, and those gloves are pressurized. So imagine like the biggest spacesuit from Christmas Story where the kid couldn't move, <laughs> you know, times ten. Um, so it's a it's a physically demanding thing. And when I would do training runs in the pool here in Houston, every time I would get out, I would have big bruises on my chest from wow. these metal rings. And uh, the whole next day, I was just wiped out. It's a, it's a physical workout. I understand. You, you've actually been on three spacewalks. So there's the physical aspect of it. But what goes through your mind once you actually get outside the station? I have to imagine it's like like the top of a roller coaster, but like times a million. I mean, what's it like? <laughs> it, it, it is. It's actually, so there's a physical workout, but there's a mental workout. Because you, it's six and a half hours planned, but it's a few hours before and after getting in and out of the suit you're just completely mentally focused. So you're also mentally, <laughs> you're mentally tired out after uh, this, the spacewalk. But 99% of my time was spent focused on the task. I'd have all these pieces of equipment right in front of me. I'm, I was plugging in cables and doing these different tasks. And then every once in a while you could stop and pause. And I remember the, the first time I did this, I stopped and I just rotated out. <laughs> and I was on the front of the space station and you could see the sun rising. It was oh. like, the most beautiful thing you you can't imagine it i felt like i was seeing creation from god's point of view um and then i had to get back to work because i had some cables to plug in so <laughs> the the view that they're going to have is 99 percent you know stuff that they're that they're working on but hopefully they'll take a few moments just to look out and see the universe before your first one were you scared so a lot of my colleagues had, on my first flight i was a pilot and they didn't like they didn't let pilots, the shuttle pilots, do spacewalks because they didn't want the pilot to float away. Um, somebody had to land the shuttle. But on my second one, I did. So I talked to some of the experienced spacewalkers and a lot of people, or some, apparently got vertigo. So the first thing I did, I, I went outside and you take that tether and you attach it. And the first thing I did was I just let go and I just looked down. I, it was still nighttime on Earth but it was, we were up in the sunlight. So the sun had already risen on the space station and I was, wow. okay, I'm not dizzy. I'm all right. And then I went, went back to work. So I wasn't scared, but I was very aware of the magnitude of the situation. We only have like 10 seconds here. Is there one most common misconception people have about a spacewalk? Uh, busy. You don't have time to look around. You are incredibly busy. 
Huh. All right. Fascinating. Terry Verge, thank you so much for joining us and giving us your perspective as we're about to see history made once again. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.